Hey y'all, my name is Tamara, and this is my financial analysis presentation of Intel. Throughout this presentation, I plan to go over a company overview, as well as discuss some of Intel's sustainability and CSR measures. Um, we'll also look at a SWOT analysis for Intel, and we will take a look at some of the company financial ratios. So Intel was founded in 1968 by two men, Gordon Moore and Robert Noyce. They were joined later by investor Andy Grove, and together they created memory chips for computers and the first ever metal oxide semiconductor. So a semiconductor just conducts electricity um, in a controlled manner and is used primarily in electronic, uh, electronic devices such as microchips, diodes, and transistors. Um, Intel currently has over 120,000 employees and operates in 46 countries. They're headquartered here in Santa Clara, not here, but here in California, uh, in Santa Clara, and they have 10 manufacturing facilities globally. So Intel is the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer by revenue, um, and they operate with six different biz business segments, excuse me. Um, one of which is their end user computer segment, um, who supplies microprocessors to names that you would recognize like Dell, Lenovo, and HP. Um, those sales actually make up, I think, just under 40% of their total revenue. Um, most people are familiar with Intel because they know their microchips and processors, but they also have um, chipsets, servers, solid state drives, networking products, they have I.O. products, um, boards, kits, all sorts of things. And even though they produce many different products varying in size, operating power, and purpose, Intel utilizes process costing um, for mass producing all of their devices um, because they sell on such a large scale. So this is just a quick look at Intel's incredible history as a company. Um, even this really is a condensed list of accomplishments and milestones, but I will go over a few of these here that are listed. In the 70s, Intel announced their IPO at a price of $23.50 um, per share, and with 350,000 shares, it totaled to $8.22 million, I believe. Um, so this, along with other great accomplishments during the decade, took Intel's revenue over $400 million within 10 short years of opening. During the 80s, Intel and Microsoft came together to successfully create personal computers for IBM. Um, and before the dec decade was up, Intel internally promoted their first female VP, who later went on to become the chief information officer. Um, the 90s was a really good decade for Intel. They saw the revenue soar above $4 billion. Uh, they were also part Excuse me, they also played a part in establishing wireless connection from computers to mobile devices, uh, Bluetooth. And during this decade, they also put out their very first video chatting software, similar to what we know as FaceTime today. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you know, not as clear and crisp, but it was called the Intel Video Phone. So during the early 2000s, they created their first multi core processor and broke ground on their biggest facility at the time in Vietnam. And since between 2010 and now, they've created their first commercial drone. They've committed over $300 million to promoting diversity in the tech sector. So not just in their, within their company, but in the entire sector. Um, and they've also seen their revenue soar over $70 billion. When analyzing Intel, it does not take much investigation to see that the, their corporate social responsibility is a driving force for their business. Um, they have pledged hundreds of millions of dollars towards creating diversity in the industry, and they take great strides to reduce their, reduce their environmental footprint through re the responsible use of natural resources. Intel's strategy, RISE, um, which stands for Responsibility, Inclusivity, Sustainability, Enabling, um, they use this acronym in every aspect of their business to ensure that they have created a, a diverse, socially responsible workplace where all employees are heard. Oh, now we're going to take a look at Intel's SWOT analysis. SWOT is just stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Some of the areas where Intel is strongest um, includes where they stand in the industry. Currently, Intel is the largest semiconductor manufacturer by revenue in the world. They beat the next largest, which is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, by almost $12 billion. And the third largest is Qualcomm, with revenue falling short by more than $31 billion of Intel's current revenue. So they're, no, they're nowhere near. Um, a related strength that Intel has got um, is their brand recognition. Uh, this company has been around for more than 50 years, and because they have had such successful marketing through those years, many recognize the brand instantly. 
although the infamous chime uh, that has changed slightly through the years, as well as well as the very familiar blue logo, would be worthless if it were not for the company's reputation of consistently offering high-quality, long-lasting, innovative, and impressive products. Additionally, um, some other strengths: Intel and Microsoft have had a long-standing working relationship um, that has mutually benefited both companies since its inception. Um, a couple of the weaknesses this company faces: firstly, the decline of PC sales. As I mentioned previously, Intel has six business segments. Um, the first and their largest segment is called the Client Computing Group, or the CCG. Uh, this is responsible for creating the end user products, or more specifically, um, chips or PCs primarily. Currently, more than 50% of the revenue comes from this segment alone. And <clears throat> excuse me, with the recent and steady decline in PC computer sales, uh, this could really turn into a serious problem for Intel. Um, this also highlights the company's need to diversify you know, their product line, um, product offerings, excuse me, and build revenue streams from other products. Another weakness worth mentioning is one that might be <laughs> one of the better problems to have in business, and that's their sheer size. With having hand in almost 65% of PCs currently in existence, there is not much room for Intel to grow uh, if they remain fixed on their current product path. Um, Without new ventures to help increase company revenue, they are liable to remain at the current size, if not shrink, while other similar but more diverse tech companies expand beyond Intel's current position. So one of the opportunities that Intel has taken advantage of lately um, is acquiring Mobileye back in 2017. Mobileye is a company focused on creating autonomous driving cars. Uh, this acquisition was a great move for Intel in terms of diversifying the company. And along the same lines and potential Intel has for diversifying would definitely be their use for, um, the use for their tech in more drones. Um, drone sales have been steadily increasing over the past decade or so, so it would be a great opportunity. In terms of threat that Intel is currently facing, um, primarily I would say the biggest threat is their rapidly growing competition, specifically AMD. AMD is a much smaller company by means of revenue, but their size has been steadily and rapidly growing, increasing by more than 300% in the last five years. Um, although there are multiple other competitors of Intel and they all pose a threat, uh, if Intel does not learn to diversify and spread their risks rather than put so much focus on their CCG segment, this could mean big trouble for them. And now I'm going to move on to the financial analysis of Intel. Um, first off comes liquidity ratios. So businesses' net working capital, current ratio, quick ratio, and cash conversion cycle are all analyzed to measure a company's liquidity. I just want to focus on the first three mentioned um, right now. First off, networking capital represents how much current assets exceed current liabilities, and Intel has a five-year average networking capital of $17.5 billion. Um, so this indicates that Intel has a good short-term financial health, and they are very capable of meeting their short-term obligations. The current ratio measures a company's ability to pay short-term obligations with their current assets. So looking back at the last five years, for every dollar of current liabilities, Intel has had an average of $1.80 um, of current assets. So this number shows that Intel does have the ability to meet its short-term obligations with its current assets. The five-year average for Intel's top competitor, AMD, is $2.01, so not too far off. Um, the quick ratio excuse me, quick ratio <laughs> measures a company's capacity to pay its current liabilities without needing to sell its inventory or obtain um, additional financing. So for every dollar of current liabilities, Intel has only 64 cents of quick assets um, on average for the past five years. So the standard quick ratio for a company is one to one. And while this does not guarantee a company's financial health, it is safe to assume that Intel has a strong financial health due to their you know, financially successful past. The five-year average for AMD is $1.38 which is more than double Intel's current ratio. So looking at the solvency ratios helps assess a company's ability to meet their long-term financial obligations. And when analyzing a company's capacity to pay off debt principal and interest expense, we're going to look at the debt ratio, which shows the percent of assets financed with debt. So the five-year average percentage of Intel's assets um, that were financed with liabilities is about 44%. So this means that the remaining 56% is financed with stockholders' equity. Um, this number is pretty similar to AMD's five-year average, which was 53%. Um, the interest coverage ratio is going to determine whether a business can pay interest on its debt. Uh, the interest coverage ratio for Intel has a five-year average of 37.96. Uh, AMD's five-year average is 48.8.
Um, let's see. So the percentage of sales left after subtracting all operating expenses, interest, and taxes has been on average uh, for Intel 25.25% for the past five years. And the av five year average for their competitor AMD um, was not quite as strong at only 11.16%. Real quick, um, we can evaluate the inventory turnover for Intel. Um, when looking at this, we can see how many times per year a company sells their inventory per period, in this case one year. Um, Intel has averaged a turnover of 3.8 for the past five years, and this is pretty similar to AMD's turnover rate, which was 4.7 in the span of five years. Stockholders are often going to review market value ratios to determine whether investors are receiving enough benefits to justify their investment. Um, earnings per share, or EPS, is going to measure the portion of a company's net income allocated to each outstanding share of common stock. So the EPS um, is a pretty important probability measure for potential and current investors. Um, it's used to relate a company's stock price to their earnings. Intel has a five-year average EPS of $4.20. And AMD's five-year average is much lower at only $1.06 average for the last five years. So DPS, or dividends per share, is an important financial ratio in trying to assess the financial health and long-term growth prospects of the company. Um, Intel's DPS has been growing pretty subtly with the most recent DPS reported in 2021 at 139, um, and the five-year average is 125. So this shows great long-term growth. We can see it growing every year. Um, and AMD currently does not offer dividends to their stockholders, so we can't compare. Intel's dividend payout ratio, or the DPR, uh, measures how much of the firm's net income is paid to the stockholders as a percentage of the firm's earnings. Um, it's important for investors to analyze DPR when evaluating, <coughs> excuse me, evaluating the stability of a company's profits. Intel's five-year average um, DPR is 32.14%, while AMD, um, like I mentioned earlier, they do not offer dividends, so again, we can't compare. Lastly, the ROE, or the return on equity, gives insight to the return um, a business has earned for their stockholders in relation to the money invested by stockholders. So the five-year average ROE for Intel was 24.02%, while the five-year average for AMD was a little bit higher at 33%. Finally, I will go into some recommendations. Intel has been a profitable business for a really long time, so there's not really much I feel like I could offer um, or suggest. But one thing, one piece of advice that I might offer if asked um, would be to revisit making chips for cell phones again. I didn't really discuss it in this presentation, but Intel was approached um, initially by Apple before they were the mobile device mogul that they are now. Um, and they asked Intel to make the processor chips for all of their mobile devices, so phones, tablets, and laptops. Um, Intel actually turned Apple down because they were unsure it would be a profitable venture in the long run. <laughs> Obviously, this was a huge missed opportunity, but hindsight's 20-20. Um, what I would suggest is an attempt to create another connection in the cell phone device world. Um, they may have to go into a deal, you know, at or <laughs> near, very close to break even um, on their product just to attain the business and eventually increase, you know, to meet market price. I don't really think this would be a big hit um, to the company just because they are so successful in other aspects, um, but I think that it could be a great opportunity, investment opportunity. I also mentioned this earlier. Um, I think that diversifying in general is just so, so important if Intel wants to stay ahead of their competitors. Um, you know, they could progress their drone technology. They could, you know, put a lot more focus on the business segment, um, Mobileye, which is completely different than what they, you know, earn most of their revenue from. Um, another thing that they could really look into is creating chips, not only for phones, but for tablets. I think that that would be, that could be a great opportunity. All right, and that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and I hope you learned a little something new about Intel. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.